Joyce, you know that family life and the little things are as important to me as my professional life. Like my chapter of the Agencia Manolo, the last, a name I took from the agencies of housekeepers in Uruguay, where I tried to find jobs for many, many residents from Uruguay, added to the enormous amounts of ill people that came for advice or to where to get treatment in the United States. Even today, I still do it, 10 years after my retirement. All the above, I did following the footsteps of Don Dali, the father that had a life I tried to imitate. He survived the First World War as a soldier and prisoner of the Germans. He escaped and started a new life, becoming a voluntary assistant to the rabbi of Krenke. He had a life that deserved writing a book about, helping get Jews out of prison, transporting people with contagious diseases that no one else dared to approach. Once in Paysandu, he assisted the community with everything that had to do with Judaism, becoming the sandek of most of the boys born there in the Jewish community, and godfather of more than a hundred children. He fed the needy and accompanied deceased Jews 350 kilometers to the La Paz Cemetery in Montevideo for burial. Together with your grandmother, Sprintzen, he helped immigrants to cross illegally to Argentina. Our home was a gypsy camp with two Russian ladies cooking big pots of borscht to feed all of those people. Your grandmother, familiar with the Slavic languages, translated any document for the public translator of Paysandu, helping Jews obtain the papers that made it possible for them to stay in Uruguay or crossing to join family in Argentina. Well, I don't want to extend myself too much, but these are my genes. Another activity that was very important to me was to be active in the community. I took part in student societies in high school and later on became part of the Student Federation of the Interior. When I came to Montevideo to go to medical school, I took part in the Association of Medical Students and after graduation became a member of the direction of COSMO, the Health Maintenance Organization of the Uruguayan Medical Society, or SMU which had more than 180,000 members. In international organizations, I was on the board of the Pan American Medical Confederation for six years. In the realm of Zionist activities, I was active in Kadima, a Jewish student organization, and later on, president of the Society of Jewish Professionals. In my professional life, after obtaining my Master of Public Health at the University of Michigan, I became the director of the Pereira Rosel Hospital, the major women's and children's hospital in Montevideo. Then I became Undersecretary of Health in the Uruguayan government. Shortly thereafter, there were many changes going on in Uruguay. A leftist guerrilla movement, the Tupamaros, had begun to challenge the government of Uruguay, and due to the unrest in the population, and most especially the university, martial law was declared. This created a situation that made my position in the government especially uncomfortable with the military increasingly acquiring power and eventually taking over the government entirely. I resigned my position in the government and returned to my work in the medical field. In 1972, I became the director of the Hospital Villar de Bo, the major psychiatric hospital in Montevideo. In the following years, the political situation in Uruguay became more and more difficult resulting in military dictatorship. As the situation in Uruguay became more and more difficult, we decided to make our aliyah to the United States. There I started my medical training all over again in a new specialty in a new language. I spent several nights each week on call in the hospital. It wasn't easy, but I did it. The training period was three years, and at the end of that time, I had a new specialty, physical medicine and rehabilitation. I acquired a position as physician at St. Vincent's Hospital, opened my own office as well, and later on became the director of the department at St. John's Episcopal Hospital. You cannot finish the summary without mentioning your mother. You know very well that I owe my success in these last years mainly to her. Starting from my masters and later at my side in the new American life, I don't have to give you more details. But with her backing, everything was easier and enjoyable. She is the example of honesty, hard work, and above all, with an exceptional intelligence for all the challenges. And that's the way I see you and Lita, good professionals, hard workers,
capable and intelligent. So I have nothing to add, only that that complements my years, reaching 80. Happy to know that I have you to count on. I just want to add some special lines about my grandchildren. They're all different, but they are all good. And now on top of all, they gave me a great granddaughter. What do you think about this? To reach this age is a great grandpa. Well, I got bored of so much writing. There's so much to say, but it's impossible to say it all. We'll continue our dialogue. A big hug, Bobby.